going to be building Christmas with us live. I'm Gemma. And I'm Tobias and we've got loads in store for you today to make sure that you are ready for Christmas. From student Christmas presents with Cece, finding Santa Claus and homing your very own Union teddy bear. Yeah, as well as a little something from UPSU TV News. Later, myself and Tobias will also be joined in the studio by a Christmas Scrooge and a Christmas lover. Should be interesting, but more from that later. <laughs> if you want to get in touch with us during the show, you can tweet us at UPSUTV, drop us a message on Facebook, or even just comment on the YouTube stream. So, the first step to building you Christmas. Let's get our very own high street looking pretty and turn on those Christmas lights on Commercial Road. Take a look at this. How festive and fireworks too, truly going off with a bang. Fingers crossed that's given you some inspiration for your own decorations. On a budget of course, Portsmouth has really pulled out all of the stops this year, great job. Now as you can see we've redecorated the studio this year, we've got our tree, we've got the decorations, all the tinsel, stockings, we really have gone all out. And we're going to hand over to Francine to sing us a little tune. Her first song is Oh Holy Night and she's going to be performing that to us today live in the studio. Have a little chat with her later. So over to Francine. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining Till he appeared and the Spirit felt his worth A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices for yonder break a new and glorious morn Fall on your knees Oh, hear the angel's voices Oh, night divine Oh, night when Christ was born 
I'll hear more from Francine later on. So we've turned the lights on, as you may have noticed. The set is looking slightly more festive and we've sung you a Christmas song to get you in the spirit. What else can we do to help you build Christmas? Oh, well, Gemma, I think there's a certain fat man we need to find and obtain. Yes, you're right. Earlier today, Santa's, helped us, Santa's helpers dropped off some clues to help us track down Father Christmas himself. But who found Santa first? Girl versus boy, Somerset versus Essex, blondes versus brunette. Gemma, it's me against you on this one. Bring it on. Well, let's take a look at what went down. Uh. Let's go. <laughs> right, first clue. Santa is missing. Where has he gone? At the end of the park is an octagon. Rotunda, perfect. I've got that. Let's go. Okay. Shouting will get you some funny looks. Remain silent. Your clue is with the books. Oh god, library-ish. Um, oh. oh no. What is she doing? Can it be my thing? Oh no. No, wait, no. Is it, do you think it's going to be towards the library? Towards, yeah? The library? Cool. I'm hoping it'll be around the entrance. Oh. This is the bit that I'm not very good at. <laughs> not naturally observant. <laughs> literally be anywhere. <laughs> God, it's the same colour as all of these leaves. It's so easy to look in. Uh, oh Do you know if I'm in the right sort of area? Yeah. Um. Time is escaping, you must not fail. The next clue is where the TV gets their mail. Where TV gets their mail? Oh, where T Where TV gets their mail? gets their mail. Okay, well anyway, I'll go back up to the union. God, I mean, Gemma's stuck in the first one. I have no idea for this next one. You might have got it. Is it? Adam? I've got it! Okay. Alright. Finally. Okay, clue number two. It's Christmas, drinking eggnog by the funnel. The next clue is situated in a glass tunnel. Right, back to the union. <laughs> so I'm looking for, I don't know, letterbox or something. <sighs> That's the only thing that kind of links with mail. Uh... Uh, I bet the bias is way ahead. <laughs> I never, I never even noticed these things in all the time I've been here. Ugh. God, I should have seen that when I came out. Okay. Your next clue will put you back on track because it's also where most part the black. Ah, okay. Downstairs pool. Emma, me off. Oh. Is this the 
Third space, I'm such an idiot, it must be like that. Final clue, yes. Onesies, t shirts, hoodies, and more. Come to see what Santa Claus has got in the store. Oh, I hope he hasn't just gone downstairs. So go back to the studio, his Santa will stay, make sure things are perfect for our Christmas day. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Winner. Loser. <laughs> Some people just have it, don't they? <laughs> See you back in the studio. No. <laughs> See you back in the studio. Can't believe I lost, but it's not over yet. We've got some more challenges coming up later in the show. I'm going to get you back. Well, don't spend too much energy on coming up with a revenge plan for me, Gemma, because you're going to need your wits about you right now. As we all know, you are disgustingly pro-Christmas. Yes, I love Christmas. Exactly. <laughs> well, to keep in with the national broadcasting guidelines in the interest of balance, we are now going to bring someone who can only be described as a Grinch. He's actually been directly the show until now, but he's going to step on set for a bit of a try and show you his point of view. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm being... Yeah, because here's the thing, everyone's like, oh, it's the spirit of goodwill and peace to all men, and I'm just like, no, it's the spirit of people coming knocking at my house and singing Christmas carols. People are already around at my house at Halloween. I don't like people coming around my house. But you don't get that any time of year. Exactly. That, that, it's a, all the time, nobody comes to my house, and then this one night of the year, in fact, no, it's, with Halloween it's one night of the year, but with Christmas, like, it's a whole season. It's like, people, oh, every night, let's just go and sing in his face. But it's so it's so festive. Those those children coming round to your house, their little bright smiley faces. Does that not does that not bring warmth to your heart? Like I'm warm in the sense that I'm like like just So, you know, I mean I, I grew up, I did my homework and look at where I am today, you know? Well, you know what, maybe if you had got into the Christmas spirit and you'd gone caroling yourself, you would be a happier human being today. Listen, I'm a very, very happy human being. It's like, it's, like, it's true, I, I enjoy things, I just, <laughs> Christmas isn't one of these things. It's just, what's, it, what's your take on Brussels sprouts, for example? For example, I love everything about Christmas, including Brussels sprouts. Do you like Brussels, Brussels, blah, blah, Brussels sprouts? You like Brussels sprouts? I love Brussels sprouts. You are everything that is wrong with the world. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, that, really? and I'm, I feel really? confident making that really? bold statement. Wow. Bold statement. I think maybe you might be worse than Brussels sprouts because you like them. But that's, that's, not, that's not an insult to me because I love Brussels sprouts. They, they are literally the best thing about the Christmas dinner. I will have a whole plate, half plate yeah. Brussels sprouts and then a little bit of everything else. Now, this is just something I feel should be 
you know, maybe brought to the audience because I'm pretty sure I'm not in the minority when I say that Brussels sprouts are the worst thing ever. And we are broadcasting to a live audience, so maybe they should write in at UPSU TV and tell us yes sprouts or no sprouts, hashtag okay. yes sprouts. <laughs> because I kind of want to know that I'm right and that Brussels sprouts are the worst thing. But I mean, please, you started off strong with your Brussels sprouts argument. So tell me more things that are great about Christmas. You really, you started on Brussels sprouts. This is getting Brussels on my Brussels sprouts book. are the best bit. But there's also um, just the, the, that Christmas morning when you come downstairs and your stocking is filled with goods. Your mince pies have been eaten. Your carrots is gone because Rudolph has eaten that carrot. You've got all those presents, that magic, that sparkle of walking downstairs. I love that on Christmas Day. Are you saying that when you walk down, you want to see that piece of coal in your stocking? Well, first of all, I'm saying that, you know, Rudolph comes into my house, eats my carrot, and only works one night of the year. Rudolph's a bit of a freeloader. <laughs> Same with Sander, actually. He only works one night of the year, and he comes down, he steals my whiskey and my cookies. Sander's working all year round. Every night, he's building your, your toys. You know how hard iPods are to make? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. You don't know my story. <laughs> look, look. I, like, as a kid, sure, I love the idea of coming downstairs and, oh my god, there's the presents. <gasps> How did they get here? Ah, but now I don't get, I'm too old, I don't get Santa presents anymore. Now I just get, I get presents off my family and it's just like, yeah, I need some boxes and what? socks, but I can just buy them myself. Santa doesn't deliver to me anymore because I'm too old. What about an advent calendar? Do you not get that excitement every day of December where you open up your little window, your little chocolate or your little picture or however you want to fill your advent calendars, it's personal choice. Then how do you not, do you not get that excitement? Like today, even in my student house at home, I have my advent calendar on the wall and I have pride at opening that every morning before I go to uni. The answer to your question is that I do not know what today's date is. <laughs> and the reason for that is because I do not own an advent calendar. See, that's why you should have Christmas. If you had an advent calendar, you'd be more on top and more organised in, in your daily life. But it's better this way because it means there's a chance that Christmas will come and go and I won't know. Like, I'll just, they'll go, oh, how did you like your Christmas? And I'm like, Christmas has already happened? Yes. Your outlook is so wrong. It's no. just so wrong. Okay, well, I tell you what. Why don't you explain to me why some of the things that you like are good? For example, turkey. Tell me what's so great about a turkey. Turkey is the best meat you can have. <laughs> no, it's um, a vegetable. Got, um, um, it's just, I think anyone that doesn't have turkey is just wrong, straight out. It is, and you can have cranberry sauce. It's like the cranberry sauce is my favourite accompaniment. And um, I feel like turkey goes perfectly with cranberry sauce. And you know, yeah, you know. Everything that's great about Christmas dinners. You know what, you know what, what goes great, great with turkey is gravy. People eat. People use Christmas as an excuse to eat cranberry sauce. Cranber cranberry, like cranberry, cranberry, cranberry sauce cranberries and cranberry favorite. juice, fine on their own. Cranberry sauce. You'd never eat that any other time of the year. I would have that on its own. I would have that actually. Brussels sprouts, cranberry sauce. I'm so weird. I feel I'm so, sorry. I feel sorry for. I actually. I'm like your intestinal system must just be an absolute <laughs> gastric nightmare. So I'm kind of going to shuffle away from you right now because if you. Oof, oh my God. God. Awful. This is getting personal. Awful. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm feeling like I might just, because I'm the director, as you may know, I might just cut the live stream so you don't yeah. shut you yeah. down with your pro Christmas agenda. What, what about you? What's your views on all this? Well, personally. And just remember, I can fire you. <laughs> um, I, well, I love Christmas anyway. It's, it's worth being fired. I love Christmas. I agree with you. I love the warm feeling that you get inside at Christmas. What, do, you not, do you not like that, Umbi? I hope you enjoy the rest of the Christmas broadcast because it is the last time you will see Gemma and Tobias on a UPSU TV screen. <laughs> Just because we love Christmas. Just because you love Christmas. This is the kind of this is the kind of ruling that I have here. I tell you what. Okay. okay. You both want to get in on this? Yep. Give me one reason each that I can't possibly dispute why Christmas is great. Personally. Yeah. Um, shout out to Dom if you're watching. He'll understand. Um, Having a dog at Christmas is the best experience. It, it opens your presents when you're not ready to open them a week before Christmas. There's wrapping paper everywhere. My little dog. Oh, it's so. Dogs make Christmas. That cat, is, cat person. Oh, that's, that's where you're wrong. No, I'm not negative. Just cats are better than dogs. End of story. Just in that, no Christmas is better than Christmas. Christmas is cancelled. I've decided, kids. 
Sorry, Christmas is cancelled. I'm in charge and I get to say and I'm afraid Christmas isn't happening this year. I think that's the, that's the conclusion we were looking for there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. So, uh, I tell you what, go back to doing your jobs. Uh, I'm glad I was able to uh, tell you guys, show you guys the way and uh, I'll be out. We'll see you guys all the time. Well, Well, hopefully you've taken both arguments on board and can decide for yourself whether Christmas is a jolly time or a waste of time. Now we all know that buying Christmas presents is a challenge on a big budget, let alone on a small one. Like I said, I am Cece. Now, Christmas is a time where we usually have to spend a whole lot of money on other people that we would much rather spend on ourselves. To avoid doing that, I am here to help you find some great gifts but on a student's budget. And what better place to do that than right next to Summerstown? I am now in an actual student house, which are oasis of inspiration if you know where to look. We can tell that obviously there's either been free drinks or breakfast here, so there's plenty to choose from. For example, a box of tissues for your pathetic older sister the next time she's crying her heart out over some boy who and then dumped her. Perfect. Here is, uh, ooh, some nice ambiguously sized shoes you know, for your father, because we all know his secret, don't we? Ooh, okay. This is a personal favorite of mine, um, vodka. This is good if you have younger siblings, or if you do, like I do, have a younger sibling with ADHD. So you just slip a little of this into their drink, and they're gone. Anyway, um, we'll go into the kitchen now, and I'll wrap this up nicely for my little brother. Okay, so we've moved on into the kitchen and the first thing that comes to mind from people of, you know, a nice breeding is that this is absolutely filthy. I would say only boys live here, but I know for a fact that isn't true. Get your shit together, girls. But still, just because something is too filthy to have a nice wrapping area in doesn't mean you can't find presents for the people that you actually don't care about. Oh God. Wow, students, huh? Oh, I feel like I should say to you poor people, this is not silver, this is aluminum foil. Here's a frying pan for your cousin who's never gonna make it as a musician and, but can't afford to buy his own drums and oh, there's still some grease in this. Mm, I love bacon. <laughs> okay, I think I've drained this for things to give to others, so I think I'll go with the frying pan and uh, I'll see you in, oh wait, I'll see you in two seconds. We are, you know what, no. I had to leave the other presents downstairs because there are 10 flights of stairs in this house. Why is there not an elevator? Oh, <laughs> well the good news is, people, <laughs> that we have a nice little handbag for your chihuahuas that you can obviously afford being students. But it is. Yeah. See, see, that's, that's actually a bra. So you put, you put your boobs in it. This doesn't fit me. So we are now in a student's bedroom. Cue the unmade bed because apparently it is too difficult to spend 10 seconds making this look nice before you leave. I might have a maid to do it for me. I'm just saying. Oh yeah, I found this chocolate actually between her, uh, between two pillows. Probably from a night spent in friendless eating chocolate and watching The Notebook, dreaming of that kind of love, knowing that she'll never get it. I also found some nice cologne, but judging by the decorations in here, she is a very single and unready to mingle girl. And if you look into her bin, there is an excessive amount of takeout menus for all those nights she spends not going out with any friends because she doesn't have any. You can use th this to wrap things up with if you want. Just kind of put the thing in it, and then you uh, you make a, a a boat, and and then you add tape or gum if you're chewing it. So so yes. <clears throat> However, out of all these things that I found in here, I think I'm going to go with the intense heat cologne, and I shall give it to. Mm, I think I'll give this to my boyfriend or my husband.
I can't decide. I'll find out later. <laughs> Okay, we are now back downstairs. Um, it was a lot easier getting downstairs, you know, obviously because the stairs go down and because I got carried. Oh, I should probably tell you that the reason I'm sitting down is because while the Christmas tree looks magnificent from here, when I stand next to it, I tower over it like Katie Holmes did over Tom Cruise and it's not a cute look. So let's look at these gifts. You might, I think we did a good job. So you might think uh, I can totally tell what's in there, but can you really? Can you actually tell that this is a frying pan, not a tennis racket? or a really big farting pillow. No, you can't. How about this? You're like, oh, that's a ball of vodka. And I'm like, uh, yeah, but is it actually, or is it a really long boob nipple? Yeah, so I am now gonna go uh, to Harrods in London. I'll have my chauffeur take me there so I can buy people some actual gifts that people with money can get to each other, like that new Dior bag that's coming out this Christmas. But first I shall go home and wash off the stale smell of student housing and cheap odor, freshener, thing, whatever you guys call it here. Um, so yeah, thank you, and uh, oh, back to the studio. It's Christmas on a student budget with Cece. Some very good consumer advice there. You needn't look anywhere else for all your Christmas present needs. <laughs> oh yeah, you weren't kidding when you said that <laughs> gifts would be memorable to buy us. So, on with the show. Everyone knows that Christmas has a special, special traditions, but what are the most important ones? We're going to hand you over to our very own James Thompson, who's going to tell us the five must-have traditions for every Christmas. So, thank you, James. Thank you, Gemma and Tobias. Hello, people. It's that time of year again, the time where we all come together to celebrate later, sort of like your average X Factor contestant's career. Anyway, there, we all know why we really celebrate Christmas, but there's a couple of things that it just couldn't be known as Christmas without. So let's begin with, well, Christmas shopping, otherwise better known as the annual purge. Yes, it's, everyone tries to get the same gift for somebody and there's normally at least 25 fatalities as a result of someone trying to get a TV. This is most likely caused by Black Friday. Although, well, you're going to have to commit free felonies just to get back Beats headphones. And then as things move on a bit, you get to Christmas Day itself and the Christmas meal. Everyone coming together and scuffing their face with whatever meat they can find. Most especially turkey, which is also known as the one meat we don't eat at any other time of the year. So why do we eat it today? Also, we eat that one vegetable that we, eat, we really hate, but we seem to eat it anyway, just because it's Christmas Day. And then we scuff ourselves so silly that we end up having to work it off in the gym or buy Weight Watchers for the following year. Or at least we say that. Really, we just go, oh, I'll, 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 I'll do it eventually. I'll, I'll work it off. One year later, oh, I, I, I never worked it off. No wonder I'm fat. <laughs> and then we move on to, well, we can all say we have that one relative. You know, the one relative that is completely off their tits by the time it's midday or the Queen's speech. Most commonly it's the aunt, but they've had maybe a little bit too much mulled wine or sherry, and by too much I mean eight glasses of it. And then by then they're going around singing off key Christmas songs, going, No, this is the stars is saying, this is the turn of the newborn thing. So I think I almost threw up a bit. Okay. And then the next thing you know, they're trying to snog your dad, who they secretly don't even like. Oh, come on, we're under the mistletoe. It'll be fine. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. And then at, by the end of it, they're gracefully and, and casually passed out on the sofa just before shouting at the TV, going, Oh, look, it's that old woman person. Yeah. Uh, uh. And then they're like that for the rest of the evening. Uh, <laughs> what was point four? I'm completely doing this off the top of my head. But um, yes, by the end of it, everyone comes together as a family, all tucked up. The hot chocolates are out and the blankets are in to watch what could arguably be considered the ultimate Christmas film to be watching at this time of year. 
Of course I am talking of Die Hard. Back to you two. <laughs> wow, thank you very much for that, James. Very informative. <laughs> now, Christmas is a time of year when people get left behind. For example, you've got to remember that a dog is for life, not just for Christmas. Think of the old ones that sat alone at home without any heating. And of course, don't forget about those union teddies that need a home. I'm sure on that last one, take a look at this. Welcome back, guys. Uh, now, this is the part of the show where we challenge our presenters, <laughs> submit them to the whims. If they think that they enjoy Christmas so much, then let's really put them through the trials here. <laughs> we have got a series of free challenges for you guys that we are going to um, submit you to and basically see how well you do. There might be a winner. There might be a loser. Maybe we're all losers here. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's, because it's Christmas. So, yeah. <laughs> you see an assortment of puzzles in front of you. Which one would you like to uh, start with first? Would you like to start with the pies? Would you like to start with the, uh, the variety of knickknacks? <laughs> maybe, maybe we should end on the pies. Should end on, yeah, the end on the pies? Okay, yes. so you want to start with the knickknacks. Start with the knickknacks. Start with the knickknacks. Mm -hmm. Guys, I'm very pleased to introduce to you the concept of a wrapping challenge. Wow, I'm, just, I'm brilliant. I'm going to win this. Now, okay, now that's what you said about the, the other VT. We about have two challenge, nautical <laughs> themed objects here. Uh, as you can see, they're a bit, bit misshapen, a bit hard to, to sort of fit into any kind of category, you know? And maybe it'd be a bit hard to wrap. Yeah, you're easy if you had a box, but you don't have a box. So, um, James, since you won the, uh, the. Sorry, Tobias, sorry. <laughs> Easy mistake to make it. <laughs> Tobias, since you won the, uh, the challenge, the Fine Santa <laughs> I challenge, did, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you get to pick of which one you'd rather wrap. I'll go for the, sh uh, the ship. You want the ship? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well. Gemma, you get, you get the anchor. Okay. Okay. If you guys want to fight over the wrapping paper, we are going to have a live challenge. Wow. Okay, There's right. One one. There's only the one scissors and one cell tape, so you are going to have to literally <laughs> fight each other <laughs> over this. Where, where are the I'm going to sit further away because I feel like this could um, get messy. Gemma's already dropped hers. Like... And guys, okay. on the count of three, <laughs> you, can't even keep you guys are going to start cutting. Are you ready? Okay. Okay. One, two, three. And I'm your commentator. My name is Umbi Winters. I'm going to be speculating on the... Um, the proceedings here. Uh, Gem is off to a good start, mainly oh, because she stole the scissors and sellotape. I personally think that Tobias made the wrong move by picking the ship because it is the most misshapen, whereas the um, cushion has a lot more padding and a lot more leeway to it and will allow for slightly more um, tape. resist. <laughs> It will allow for slightly more resistance as uh, Gemma is trying to actually wrap no. the present. Whereas Tobias has to be very careful. That's a very delicate and expensive ship he's got there. And so if he breaks it, he will have to pay for it. Whereas it's hard to break a cushion. But it is Gemma, so not impossible. Oh, this is like oh. See, not impossible. Now, Tobias has actually taken the world by storm here, and that is a pun on the fact that it's a ship. Um, don't worry, don't forget guys, I will be judging you on the actual quality of the wrapping, not the fact that you simply wrapped it first. Oh, I wish you'd told us that before. Yeah, I said don't forget, I never told them. I'm making rules up as oh. I go, because I'm the Grinch and I'm allowed to do that. So, oh, no. God, Gemma, you can again. still win if yours is nicer looking, but it's not at the moment, so... <laughs> Tobias could still easily win this. Okay. Still anyone's game. I could just make up a winner based on who I like more. But that would imply <laughs> I like either one of them. 
No, you have to wait. You have to wait. You have to wait. Oh, fine. Just because I'm a gentleman. Go on. <laughs> Be quick. Just Come because on. she's stronger than you. <sighs> As she's doing that, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, come on, this, this speaks for itself, surely. No. Right, right. And then look, look at this disaster right here. Look at that. Oh, I'm looking at a disaster I right now. I would be horrified if I got that under my tree and had to open it. Well, yeah, mainly because it's a cushion. <laughs> oh, okay, why don't you just give up now? Okay. Come on, yes. Gemma, no. You've got so much more to play for. <laughs> okay, right. I still want to know what you guys think in regards to uh, hashtag yes Brussels or hashtag no Brussels because me personally I think I'm right in thinking that the majority of you guys don't like Brussels sprouts and that Gemma and Tobias are weird individuals. Please, I'm so that's help you. on Twitter, hashtag yes Brussels, hashtag no Brussels. No, it's the survival of the fittest. Mm -hmm, exactly. Oh, by the end of the tape. They're both looking like they're almost done. Yeah, I think this is done. You think that's done? Yeah. Okay. Where, where, where's Tobias, set your ship down. Okay. Gemma, are you saying are you are you I submitting that as your final? Oh my God, are you are you submitting this. that? Look at this. Is that your submitting to turn it in? That is my final. All right. <laughs> Let's have a look at what you guys hear. Oh, you wow. see, yeah, exactly. If I saw either of these yeah. under the tree, yeah. from this point of view. Um, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, if you might want to... Should we hold them up? Yeah, yeah okay. I'll happily Like, if I saw either of them under the tree, you know, I might think, Oh, you know, that... Yeah, I mean, obviously I can, I can tell that that's either a ship or a slice of pizza. And I'd, ra I'd rather actually. get a slice of pizza under the Christmas tree, <laughs> if I'm honest. Um, yours could be a pie. Yeah, they, they both look quite good, but uh, turn around. Turn around. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I thought. Um, so, not only did he get his finished first, but his is actually wrapped. <laughs> Gemma. <laughs> Tobias wins round one. Yes. Oh my god. Okay. okay. You still no, have unwrap that because that's not ours. Right. Oh, okay. No, no, do it after the show. Do it after the show. Okay. All right. Leave it here. So we'll... you can watch it. Now, I'm curious because I know that there are three challenges, but in front of me, I only have one challenge left. So what do you guys have there? Do you want to explain what you're holding? We have some, some lyrics, questions and answers. Are they for each other or am I supposed to read them out to you? I, I, for each other? Alright. Oh, oh yes, for each other. No, yes. No, we have to guess the lyrics. Take a step out for this round, and when we get back, you guys are having a pie eating competition. Mm -hmm. Right. I can't wait for that. I love mince pies. Okay. So I'll, yes. take, I'll take a step back, and I'll be back with you guys in a couple of minutes. Right. Okay. Do you want to go first? I'll go first. Okay, go on. Um, I'll start with a. Wait, are you actually going sing to sing it for me? Uh, sing the line? I feel like that may push it slightly to work. <laughs> um, I was going to start with an easy one, but. <laughs> okay, so we'll start with this one. The, uh, the classic Mariah Carey, okay. All I Ooh. Want for Christmas. Yes. The question is uh, the opening opening line. You have to finish the line for me. So you have to finish the lyric okay. of the song. Yeah. So Hang my stocking there upon the fireplace. And you have to finish that line. Oh, can I, can I hear it again? I don't need to hang my stocking there upon the fireplace. All I want for Christmas is you. Unfortunately, no. Oh, I have to. I have damn. to do it on Christmas Day. I think that's one point to me there. <laughs> uh, I think that's, that's one nil to Gemma there purely because you didn't get the answer. Well, okay. So, anyway, um, my, my go now. Okay. Right. Are you ready for this? I am. My God, I thought you were someone to rely on. What was the song? Last Christmas by Wham. Okay. 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 Go again. Oh my God, oh. I thought you were someone to rely on. Do you, know, do you know how that goes? Could you sing that? Or? I couldn't, no. Um, I'm, g I'm gonna have to pass. I'm gonna have to simply pass on that one. Okay, I think you should, you should lose your point for <laughs> that, for passing, and I should gain half a point, just okay. actually one and a half, perhaps. Okay. Me, I guess I was a shoulder to cry on. I have to say, I wasn't expecting that. No, no, these, these are hard, these okay. These are very hard. Wow, okay, oh, I think oh. you should go next. Um, Slade, Merry Christmas, everyone. Ah, um, okay, I'm confident. Oh, this is actually a really easy one. Um, okay. I'm upset by this. So, um, the opening line is, Does your granny always tell ya? Is that it? Does oh, your granny on, always tell ya? This is an easy one, Tobias. This is a simple... I'm awful at this, honestly. <sighs> Merry Christmas, everyone. Oh. The old songs are the best. 
Dialogue Granny always tell you the old songs in the back. Wait, are you telling me you knew that? Yes, I knew that. Oh, shit, you didn't two know points that. Two points to Gemma. <laughs> two points to Gemma. <laughs> okay, um, if you don't get this one, it's a draw, and it's yeah. still 1-0 okay. to me, okay? So okay, the pressure's on. Go. Okay, The Wizard. No, no not The <laughs> Wizard. <laughs> wizard. I wish it could be Christmas every day. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can I see the answer? This is all you... Okay, this is all you get. Then your rosy cheeks. <laughs> Do I get a clue? Can you give me a clue? <laughs> um, I, I've decided I'm, I'm not going to help the opposition, no. I, I want to win, so I'm... I can't, I can't, I can't respond there. I don't know the answer <laughs> to yet another question in this <laughs> challenge. Gonna, gonna light my merry way. Oh. So then your rosy cheeks gonna light... My merry wait. Well, uh, I feel like we need to do some revision. Really, yeah, we were awful stuff. at that. Really. Um, um, do you, I think, should do one more, some one more each, and then. Ooh. Um, see who's, see who's I don't know. I don't think we're gonna be able to no. do it. Why don't we invite Umbi back I, for back? the next? He knows the rest of the questions. Maybe. Umbi, okay. welcome back. You're damn right. You're clapping. Um, <laughs> see, I got all festive. Ho ho ho! You've got, you've got Christmas. I got Christmas right pigtails. That must be. Yeah. No, um, I feel like we failed this challenge. Yeah, you both did. It was horrible. We didn't actually <laughs> answer a single question. Um, no. Correctly. So I feel like we're going to ask the last two questions, ask the last couple of questions to you. Um, yeah, right. See how familiar you are with your Christmas spirit and Christmas okay. question knowledge. Um, so the song Band Aid, Do They Know It's Christmas? Yep. That familiar song. Yep. The opening line is, Where the only water flowing? Yeah. The answer is. You said the opening line is... Wait, where yeah, that is, where the only water flowing, dot, yeah. dot, dot, and you have to finish. Feed the world! You know what? Wow. I'm going to give you a point. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can sing, Umbi, you can sing. Wow. I think you've done better than both of us in this. So. Yeah. So I'm winning overall. The entire show, I'm winning. Okay. You're only interested Anti-Christmas is winning this there. round. Come on, give me one more. Okay, right, we've That's got um, Mistletoe and Wine. Yeah. The, that famous Christmas song. Yeah. Um, with logs on the fire, gifts on the tree. Dot, dot, dot. Santa Claus is coming to town. You don't get a point for that one because that was actually the wrong song. Okay. okay. Oh. So, uh, the singing voice was beautiful. Uh, yeah. But I think we're going to leave that round there. Okay. Okay. I will accept defeat on that one. No, no, no. No, no. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Because, first of all, it's my show and I make the rules. And second of all, because it's uh, for the process of entertainment, it would be boring if we went to the final round and Tobias had already won. So since I won that round, I'm going to give that point to you. So as we fared into the final round, it is a tiebreaker. Yeah. Food wow, <laughs> okay. Okay. One of you would like to open that. Make sure you guys get a lovely, lovely close-up for this. Really get right in on their mouths for this, okay? Yeah, okay. So we're going to give these guys... Three mince pies each. You know what? I'm not that cruel. Two mince pies. Two mince pies? Right. Is it like, are we going to do it in a time limit or we're going to see who can eat the most first? We're going to, no, no, we're just going to give you two mince pies and whoever can finish first, okay? okay. The last two mince pies can go to hungry children. They can go and feed the world. So, yeah, if you eat both, if you eat both in one minute each, you have in fact broken a world record. So, guys, take the camera off me because this is now all about them. Really get nice in and close. Get the look of pain on their faces. I'm actually going to time this for you guys as well, okay? So we see if we actually have broken a world record. That'd be pretty exciting. If we can break a world record, that would be amazing. Oh, okay. Right. Oh, no, there's been mince everywhere, okay. I'll leave mine second one ready. Okay. Oh, that's a good idea. You shouldn't have told me that. Ready? Okay. We are ready. Mince pies! <laughs> Let's put these yeah, on don't the spill. All right, guys, ready? <laughs> Three. <laughs> Two, one, go. Oh my god. Thoughts on how the going so far. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> oh my god. Oh 
harder than I thought. It How did be. you guys find that before you move on? Actually, no, don't answer me because you can still break a world record. Go! They can't break a world record. They've already failed. I don't let them know that. <laughs> Guys, I was wrong. Christmas is a wonderful time. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is. I'm with that. Are you done? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Tobias Woodward, you just ate two mince pies in one minute, ten seconds. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were going to start breaking the record then. Wow. So, a little bit short of the record. <sighs> But you did, you did amazing. I'm mm -hmm. actually genuinely quite impressed. <laughs> well, what can I say? I thoroughly enjoyed that. No, you won't. And I think as a consolation prize, you do need to finish it in one bite. <laughs> Just shove it in. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> mm, wow. <laughs> all right. So, at the end of all of that, <sighs> Tobias, you do win. You Again. win. You win the presenter <laughs> challenges. It's just, even when I, even when I physically it, threw you a point, <laughs> even when I gave you my point, you still won. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, well done on that. Uh, yeah. And now I'm going to leave because you guys have actually made my Christmas. You've actually well, made I'm, me enjoy the festive see, season. Do you like Christmas now? I do. Yes. Thank you, guys. You, Come on. My, 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 my heart has grown three sizes this day. <laughs> So I'm going to leave the you guys in, I'm going to leave the show in your exactly capable what, hands. This is what Christmas the, is about. The isn't exact it? aims of UPSG mm. TV building Christmas with us this year. Yeah. So Merry Christmas. Have a run. Thank you very much. Umbi. Thanks very much. Thank you. Umbi, everyone. <laughs> Oh, well, I think it's clear to see who the winner was there. Let's so. end the challenges tonight and go on to something a little more serious. News, over to you. <laughs> Hello and welcome to our Christmas edition of UPS UTV News. Tonight we've been helping you build your Christmas, but what about people beyond your family and friends? Families living in poverty in Hampshire struggle every year to fulfil their children's excitement as Santa Claus coming on Christmas Eve. Local radio station Wave 105.2 is looking to change this by helping less fortunate children have a merrier Christmas. Mission Christmas seeks to give 54,000 children a present on Christmas morning when they wouldn't normally receive anything. So here at UPSC TV News, we've done just that and donated a present to a child for this wonderful cause. Now over to James with more on this story. You can donate any toy for a child or young person from the age of 0 to 18. The toy has to be new, but it doesn't have to be wrapped when you donate it to a Thomas Cook or Sainsbury's involved in a campaign. So if you want to donate a gift for a child this Christmas, go to wave105.com and find your nearest drop-off point or donate online. So I'm joined by Jonathan, store manager for Sainsbury's. Thank you for joining us. So how long has uh, Sainsbury's been supporting the uh, Christmas mission? Well, the appeal um, for Mission Christmas was started by Wave about six years ago, and we've been supporting for the last, this is the third year, okay. that we're um, supporting it. Why does Sainsbury's get involved? Well, statistically speaking, there are 17,000 children living in poverty within um, Wave's catchment area, and we've got a lot of stores within that same catchment area. It's a great chance for us to get involved and help support the local community and give something back. Uh, what has the response been so far by the community? Um, the response is really good. Um, I mean, it's nice to go. We continue collecting until the 14th of December, and we should get an update of figures to see where we are by the end of this week. And how many toys are you hoping to collect this year? The target this year is um, 54,000 toys. That's um, last year we managed to achieve 32,000. That's great. Um, finally, what's your favourite part? Getting together with the family and Christmas lunch, obviously. Bye. Thank you very much for joining us. And it's easy as that. You would have put a smile on a child's face this Christmas at little expense to you. James Thompson reporting for UPSU TV News, wishing you a Merry Christmas. Now back to the studio. James Thompson with that report. Radio stations aren't the only ones helping our community this Christmas. The news newspaper in Portsmouth is also doing their part to give families a better Christmas this year. 
Christmas dinner seems to be a given after you've opened your presents. However, some families struggle to put a meal on the table over this festive period. Following last year's success, the News Portsmouth have collaborated with supermarkets all over the Portsmouth area to help run their Christmas food appeal. Food parcels are made up by volunteers and the from the Salvation Army and are sent to households that need them most at this time of year. Last year, over 60 hampers were made up and sent to families that needed help. If you'd like to help this appeal, then look out for supermarket trolleys at the end of the checkouts in participating supermarkets. There, you can drop off some food that will make someone's Christmas that little bit more merrier. A full list of contributing supermarkets can be found on the New Sportsmith's website. If you have any caring Christmas moments to share, tweet us at UPSUTV with the hashtag UPSUBuildingXmas. That's all for tonight. Tune in after New Year's where we'll be back with more breaking news. But in the meantime, from all of us here, Merry Christmas. broadcast has well and truly got me in the Christmas spirit. I just want to go home, open a bottle of wine by the fire and eat lots and lots of chocolate. Oh, Gem, I think I'm going to join you on that. <laughs> Thanks, Tobias. <laughs> well, that's all we've got time for today. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> but for all of us here at Thank UPSU you. TV, <laughs> we like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Now, to sing us out, we're going back to Francine with Hevelyn. Thank you and join us next year. Thanks for watching. Until next year. Bye. Bye. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round your virgin mother and child, Tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. Silent night. Oh.